Hey guys, it's the Phenomenal Stennis. Join me. Set myself up, it's seven o'clock. I'm still trying to work out the times where I think most people are on Facebook. Um, but I'm hoping that you guys are able to join me. I'm gonna make sure that I'm online. But I'm sure um, if I don't see you now, I guess I'll see you on the replay. Um, just to remind you, I'm covering why I believe in a creator um, this September. And I think it's been great. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, just to recap, I had someone ask me to talk about my belief in creation and if I was able, you know, to show my, I guess, my uh, scientific belief in creation. And I like to focus on my belief in creation based on the things I see in the natural world. Um, but I always tell my friends and my colleagues, um, scientifically, I cannot prove the existence of God. Um, but man, there must be a God. When I think about the universe, when I think about the process of, of conception, when I just think about the process of birth, um, when I look deep down into the cell, the individual unit of life, I, there must be a master engineer. I just really can't fathom um, it not it just coming out of nowhere. But out of respect to the evolutionists, God has come out of nowhere. Scientifically, to your point, I don't think we understand how God has come about. He has no beginning. He has no end. Um, he, he is from nothing. He has always been. Um, and so the beginning of time is based on his creation, but before him was no beginning. And that's, I don't even understand how that works. Um, but, you know, we call that infinity, right? Like, what's the infinity of infinity? Infinity, it's, we don't have an answer. Um, so I would never be arrogant to say, I know all things. Um, but I just know based on uh, something that I have within me, my own personal experience. That's why I shared with you guys, uh, along with uh, a friend of mine, we both shared with you our experience of some kind of sovereign entity greater than ourselves. So um, I want to continue with that in discussing 40 weeks. <laughs> what do I mean by that? 40 weeks. The womb carries a child uh, for 40 weeks. Uh, the womb of a human carries a child for 40 weeks. That's it. 40 weeks. Can you imagine a human being growing in just 40 weeks? Right in front of you, I have a um, 
a picture of a human embryo. A human embryo. And it looks like a alien, doesn't it? Doesn't it look like an alien? Like <laughs> before you even notice that you miss your period, a woman, um, there is something growing inside of a woman. Four weeks. The nervous system is created. It's the first organ system. Your brain and spinal cord are the first organs to be created. And it happens in just one month. This might be primitive. It's primitive. But it's, it's something formed nonetheless. Something formed nonetheless in just one month. A horse is born in 11 months, right? A elephant is born in 22 months. I want you to think about that. A horse is born in 11 months, and an elephant is born in 22 months. So it takes two, almost two years for an element, elephant, excuse me, to be born. It takes almost a year for a horse to be born. It takes nine months, 40 weeks, uh, for a human to be born. But what's the difference between when a horse is born or an elephant is born versus a human? When a human is born, they can't walk for another year. When a horse is born, give it a few minutes. When an elephant is born, give it a few minutes. A baby has to live outside of his mother's womb for another year so that it will be able to walk. That's how massive the human brain has to grow. It has to grow outside of the mother's womb. A baby is born early. A human baby is born earlier than should be. My animal should be able to be born and immediately do what they need to do. But when a human is born, their brain is so massive that they can't even wait to gestate in the mother's womb. They have to come out first and then be nurtured on the outside that the brain may able to be able to grow in a special way on the outside of the mother's womb. So today I'm talking about the the human, the baby, a baby's brain and how it has to grow massively and it does so quickly. So I told you four weeks, it's just a little tube. Look at it. It's just a little tube. That's it. With three parts. Within one week, within one week, that Three dimension, three part two turns into one, two, three, four, five parts in just seven days. Five week pregnancy, pregnancy, you have your hemispheres of your cerebrum. It's not a cerebrum yet, but it's still distinctive. Now it's very small. It's very primitive but it's formed, it's formed. There's special shapes. Look, it looks different, doesn't it? It has a shape to it. That embryo has a shape to it. 
who did that? It just, it couldn't, it just, to me, I just can't see it just happening. I can't see it just evolving out of nowhere. I can't see dust just coming out of nowhere and just doing that randomly. 13 weeks, 13 weeks, right? 12 weeks is three months. First trimester, ear, eyes, fingers. But look at the brain. Look at that brain. It went from just one week transitioning to, to one, two, three, four, five structures. And look what happened. So this is how it looks inside of the body of the baby, of the embryo. One, two, three, four, five structures. You see that? Look what happens in, in two, two more months, just two months. You're seeing this form structure surrounding other parts. They're forms. I'm talking about why I believe. I believe because I was formed. Last time, a couple of weeks ago, we talked about um, how a random sperm and a random egg got together. And it made just one cell, guys. One cell, a sperm and an egg joined together. They were, we call them haploid. They only have half the DNA half from your mother, half from your father. When they come together, they make one whole cell. You came from one singular cell. It's called a zygote. And that was just the moment you were conceived. But just four weeks after that moment, that one cell massively created some alien looking structure but nonetheless it was formed and one week later there became more forms and just two months later there's ears and eyes and no a nose and a mouth with with a spinal cord and a brain 13 weeks you have all of that three months and then and then you add on another three months, six months in the womb, 26 weeks. At this point, a baby can be born and live outside of the womb. Pre this moment, you'll be more likely, uh, it, it will be more likely that the baby would, would pass. Uh, but at 26 weeks, look at this very, very small child. Uh, but look at the way the cerebrum looks. You see how it's smooth here? But now you're starting to see folds. I'm talking about being formed in a short period of time. I mean, this massive brain, look how, look how much smaller the second part is. We call that the diencephalon. Look at that. Look how big the diencephalon looks compared to this. It's not that this shrunk into this, you know. It's that this part grew massively. It grew so massively that the second part looks small. In three months, this happened between this part and this part. I want you to understand, it, doesn't, it, it takes forever to make things. Nine months. It's not a long time. Nine months is not a long time. To me, it isn't. 40 weeks. I want you to see the way this, 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 what I'm talking about. At 20 gestational weeks, look how smooth. This is, this is a, um, a brain. This is actually a, images of, 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 of brains in the womb. Look how smooth this is. That just says that it's 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 that it doesn't have a lot of uh, folds because it's not that big, right? The reason why things fold is so that you can uh, increase the amount of space that you have in a small area. 
we call it increase the surface area. So imagine having a long, long string, but you have to fit it in a small box. Well, you have to crinkle it. You got to crinkle it so that you could fit in. And so such as, so is it with our brain. Um, our brain is massively growing, a massive increase in size uh, within a few weeks, right? You go from having this much of brain mass to this much. Look how big the baby's brain grows in 15 weeks, right? Four months. Look how mat like it, it grows in size, not just in like just the size of it, but it's crinkling up lots of folds in this baby's brain. In literally a few months. And even that is not enough. Even that is not enough uh, room. So the baby has, the head of the baby has to massively grow. And it can't do that in the mother's womb uh, because it actually needs the sensation of out the outside to even cause the brain to grow much more. And so it has to be born early so that the sensations of the environment on the outside can trigger even more growth before the baby has the ability to move itself uh, via his or her muscles. Her his or her brain has to grow massively on the outside. I said, th I said this before, an elephant will gestate in the elephant elephant mother's room, womb for 22 months so that when it comes out, it's ready to walk. Same thing with a horse. You'll see it right away. But we need more. And I just, I just don't think that's out of, um, that evolved. I think that we were formed in the womb, just like our brain is formed in the womb. There's a master plan at this, a master planner at work with this. It's the cerebrum that makes animals different than, than humans. This massive cerebrum of which we hardly use a lot of. And we're, we're, we're artificial intelligence is trying to copy the human brain. And it takes so many engineers to make robots. We don't even fully understand how we're creating these robots based on the human neurophysiology. And we laud these engineers. It's amazing to me. We laud these engineers. I never forget when um, I think it was the owner of Tesla put a Tesla out into space. And the fact that he was able to put a Tesla out into space and it moved, people were like, he's so magnificent. This is amazing. A Tesla? But what about the God who flung the stars into space? We have to see an engineer put a car into space, a little car, and we have satellites and suns and all kinds of things moving into space in a controlled manner. And we say that happened by chance. We can't even create the robots that well yet. And we, 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 honor this, the scientists. We give so much um, credit to scientists that are making these robots, like they're brilliant. But then the person who, who made this in a moment, he made it. And then he instituted a, a process in where we can create this in a moment. A woman can create this magnificent, structure in 40 weeks.
40 weeks, guys. I, I just don't. People are taking years to create artificial intelligence. And this child right here with a magnificent computer, unbeatable, called the brain. In 40 weeks. That is why I believe in a creator. Because I did not come about by accident. I was formed in the womb. And I was formed in the womb in just 40 weeks. And that is amazing to me. I am the Phenomenal Stemist. Thanks for watching.